Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat, and today I'm talking about my favorite LGBTQIA plus books that I have read so far in 2021. So I'm only going to talk about five, although there are many that I enjoyed. Um, I just want to have an honorable mention for Star Eater. Um, I didn't want to repeat myself because I already put this in my favorite dark books of the year, so I will leave that linked down below if you want to check that out. I highly recommend it. I gave it four and a half stars, but I want to focus on books I haven't yet brought to your attention as my favorites. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So my number five pick so far for the year is Ice Massacre by Tiana Warner, who is a Canadian author. So this has lesbian rep as well as one of the main characters is a person of color. So we are following a very isolated community in a very cold area where every year they send out their young men to battle the mermaid sirens who are killing them in order to progress their trade and be able to um, sail their ships. So it's basically a constant battle between the community and the killer sirens. And it's gotten to the point, it's gotten so bad where they have no more young men to send, so they decide to train up a young fleet of female warriors instead. Uh, and so one of our main characters is the, a female warrior and she is going out on her first ice massacre um, to hunt down the sirens that have been killing her people. Um, but the thing about that main character is that in childhood, she had a best friend who was a siren who would visit her along the shore. Um, so as she sets out on the high seas to avenge her people and slaughter the sirens, um, when she eventually runs into that siren again, um, they have this absolute hatred for each other. They were friends in childhood and now they are just enemies. Um, and it goes from there. I thought that this was great. Um, I couldn't put it down. It reads like a uh, like very dark siren adventure story on the high seas. Um, so if that is at all up your alley, go for it. I know that there are more books and I really want to get to them. I think I'm going to put number two on my Christmas wish list. Um, so yeah, definitely check this out if you can get a hold of it. I got mine from Abe Books and it came all the way from the Vancouver Public Library. So if you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend. My number four pick is Our Bloody Pearl by D.N. Bryn, uh, who is an American writer who is non-binary. So um, this one I've mentioned before in my non-binary reads of the year so far, um, and it is fabulous. So again, this is a mermaid story. I read both this one and Ice Massacre in January, because I always do Merry January, which is like sea themed, because I love ocean books. Um, and I love mermaids. So this one, again, deals with mermaids, but it is instead about a mermaid named Pearl, who is non-binary and physically disabled. Um, and they have been captured by a pirate and held captive and just like physically abused and treated very poorly because the pirate captain is trying to figure out how the mermaid can turn into a siren and use their voice as a weapon. Um, and when that pirate is boarded by another pirate, um, that pirate saves Pearl and brings them onto their ship and the story goes from there. This had so many fantastic elements in it. Um, for example, there was a non-binary disabled main character, a queer male main character, a trans rep, a female-female relationship, um, as well as sign language rep. So there was so much in here that was so great. Um, and I really loved the character relationship dynamics, very soft and very respectful along the way. Um, and I really, really enjoyed this. I think that this is like a level up for people that kind of like the Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill. Um, it's obviously not dragons, it's mermaids and sirens, but it kind of still preserves that really soft, respectful character building where everyone is very just queer and they're whatever they want to be. Um, and it's just respected in the world. It's not like made a thing. Um, so if that sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend it. 
I really enjoyed it and I'm really bummed that actually this is a series, I think, and the second one is not out. So um, I really hope that in the future the second one does get published. My number three pick is Tin Man by Sarah Winman. This is probably one of the most popular ones uh, that I have read and loved this year. I read it way behind everyone else. I think this was popular on Goodreads and Booktube like three years ago? <laughs> I don't even know. Um, but it's for a very good reason. So when this book opens we are following Ellis who is alone and bereft in dealing with a lot of grief in his life and he's very isolated. Um, and then we go backwards and we meet his childhood best friend Michael who they were best friends and then um, they kind of grew up together and their relationship changed into something else. And right at the time when it's starting to change into something else, um, Annie comes along and Ellis ends up marrying Annie and the dynamics of the three change forever. And it's an exploration more of like learning to deal with the death of a loved one and also grieving what could have been at the same time. The ending broke me and put me in a huge reading slump and it was devastating. Um, <laughs> very much so. So the rep in here is M.M. Gay and then by or Pan. It's not explicitly stated which one, um, but whew, yeah, this is a heavy one and it deals with a lot of talk of grief and loss and also the AIDS epidemic. So uh, if that's not your thing, if then just be forewarned about that. Um, but I thought that this was excellent and I'm, gra I'm really glad that I finally finished it. So number two is The Weight of the Stars by Kay Ankrum. I really love Kay Ankrum. She is a black American writer and she just does character work so, so well. So similar to how I said Our Bloody Pearl is kind of like the Tea Dragon Society way of treating characters very softly, gently, respectfully. This is the real life version, I think. So like if you needed a, a real life version of Tea Dragon Society where the characters are all different types of queer spectrum and just being accepted and loved for who they are and it kind of breaks your heart a little, that this would be your book. So we are following two main characters. Uh, one is just trying to make it through high school and graduate and take care of her family. They live in a trailer park. Her brother is selectively mute and raising his own son um, and they're really struggling to make ends meet. And the other character is a new girl to school whose mother long ago left on a space trip that's one way into deep space. So every night she climbs up on the roof to receive transmissions from her mother in hopes of like forming a connection. And actually when their paths cross they don't get on well, they kind of have a bit of a tiff, a fight, um, but then the teacher asks uh, Ryan if she will be willing to look out for the new girl and like help her at school um, and it goes from there. And the friendship group in here is so, so good. There is so much rep. So we have a female-female relationship, lesbian rep, bisexual rep in the main characters, um, gay, bi, and pan side characters, a male, male, female, poly parent trio, um, as well as a mixed race black main character and selective mutism rep. Um, so I really think that this is just like a soft, warm, gooey, found family friendship group that also has some space elements thrown in. Um, and yeah, the ending, again, just like ripped my poor little heart out. <laughs> but um, I highly recommend this. And um, I also highly recommend her other book, The Wicker King. And uh, I can't wait to read Darling, which just came out, which is the newest K. Ingram. So um, really looking forward to it. And my favorite so far of the year is Fragile Remedy by Maria Ingrande Mora, who is an American author. So this one I haven't heard many people talking about at all and it's really surprising to me because this book kicks so much ass. So if you like a uh, dystopian and found family, this is the perfect, perfect book for you. So we're following Nate, who is a gem, a genetically engineered meta tissue, basically originally created as a, as kind of this spare parts for humans that live in the utopian city 
However, his parents smuggled him out of the city a long time ago so that he wouldn't be used for spare parts. So he's kind of living in the slums and to make money for the expensive drugs that he needs to stay alive, he's a tinker, which is basically an engineer or like a person who can fix everything electronic and scavenge parts. And he's taken in by Reed, who is kind of the leader of this found family group that all watches out for one another. And just the development in here is so, so good. I can't explain it. I love the dystopian elements. I love the gem elements. One of Nate's best friends, but also like his enemy at the same time is his drug dealer who he needs these drugs to live, but then also like being best friends with the dangerous drug dealer isn't really a good thing, but their relationship is so complex and like very gray. And I thought that this was like a very complex, nuanced, dynamic, dystopian. And I absolutely loved it. I don't know why everyone isn't reading it or raving about it. I have no idea. It deserves way more praise and recognition than it currently has. I cannot wait for the next one to come out. I will read it immediately. Um, so this one got me by the heart. I cried my eyes out. Um, it has MM relationship as well as gay rep, trans rep, and a um, POC main character. Um, the only thing I'm going to mention is that there are some needle scenes in here um, because drug use is like prevalent throughout the society. Um, and I'm only mentioning it because I have a great fear of needles myself. So those scenes were a bit hard to read, but they were completely necessary to the plot. So uh, if you really like dystopian and found family and queer elements, please pick up this book. It deserves so much more recognition. I wish I could push it into the hands of everyone who likes those three things that I just mentioned, because um, I am in love with this book. It's currently, I think, my favorite book of the year so far. So like out of all genres. So high recommendation, high praise, please read it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that wraps up my top five, six, if you include Star Eater, favorite queer books of the year so far. Please let me know what queer books you have been reading and loving, and I will chat to you in another video soon. Lots of love. Bye!